Welcome everyone. My name is Sagar and today in this video we are going to discuss the most famous Android interview question which is activity life cycle in Android. But before you skip this video let me tell you that we are going to learn something extra that you might not be aware of. So even if you are a beginner Android developer then you already know this diagram. This is our simple activity life cycle with our callbacks on create, on start and all the functions. I will still explain all those functions but uh, there is something extra that is called as life cycle states and events. Also this is one of my favorite questions to ask because whenever I ask about the states of activity life cycle most people will just start discussing about the callbacks on create on start and all those things. They don't even know about what is initialized state, what is created state and all those things. So I will also explain them. So if you already know about this activity life cycle then I will add a timestamp you can directly jump to this events and states thing. But if you are a beginner or want to revise these things, then uh, let us start with this callbacks. So first of all, what is the life cycle of an activity? The life cycle of activity describes the whole life when it is created, when it is working, when it is not working and when it is destroyed. So it is basically self-explanatory. But the question here is why this thing is important. So when you are opening your application, the developers should know that you opened your application and uh, then you can perform some operations like making a network call to get some data and show it in your application. And they should also know when you are not focusing on your application and you are doing something else. So they should stop something that uh, they were showing in your application. And when the activity is destroyed, that means you are no longer using their application. So they should also release some resources so that they can save memory and battery life. So that's why this activity lifecycle exists. So one of the famous question is what are the callback methods of an activity? So callback method means when the activity state changes, they will call some particular function so that you can operate something on a particular lifecycle event. So let's see this diagram. First the activity is launched. Then the first callback method which will be called is onCreate. So in the whole lifecycle of an activity, this onCreate will be only called one time. And when it is called, the activity will be created and you can do some important operations in this callback. And you can see when you are creating any activity, so this onCreate function will be automatically present. And a one-time operation will be defining your UI for your screen. Or if you want, you can also make a one-time network call here or anything that should not be repeated throughout the lifecycle of your activity. So after this, onStart will be triggered and that means the UI is present in your screen now. And if you want to override any of these methods, then you can just write here inside your activity, press Ctrl O and there you can see on create on start will be here on and then and the next function is on pause so it will be also here so when this on start is called our activity is visible to the screen and when we call this on resume then we can interact with our activity so that means now our activity has the focus which might not be a case when you are having some bottom sheet so your activity might lose the focus and in such cases when your activity doesn't have the focus then your own pose will be called. For example there is a bottom sheet then your previous activity do not have the focus then on pose will be called. Another example is when you have a phone call so you will have a top up and now your focus is on that phone call notification and your activity will not have the focus and that's when the on pose will be triggered. And after this when your activity again comes to the focus suppose you are closing the bottom sheet or you are removing that notification then again your activity come to the focus and on resume will be again called. So these two function on resume and on pause can be called in multiple scenarios multiple times. So that's why you should not do some heavy operation in these functions. So after on pause we have this on stop. So suppose you are running your application and you press the home button. So your activity will be stopped. See this your activity is still there but it is just not present in the foreground. That means you cannot see it but still you can restart it. So when you go to the recent apps and you again open the activity then on restart will be called and then on start will be called because you are restarting your activity right. So for an example if you are creating a video player application and you are showing some video and you press the home button then that video should be stopped. So the logic for stopping the video should be present inside this on stop function alright. So that when your activity is not present that means your video is not present in the screen then that video should be stopped. And when the activity again comes to the foreground that means on start will be called then that time you can start the video. So after this on stop suppose our application was in background and from the recent app you just close the application. So that time the on destroy will get called. So that means the activity is completely finished now. 
So now you might have seen a pattern here. So when the activity is created, so it is also destroyed. So for on create, there is a on destroy function. So whatever you are registering in on create, that should be unregistered in on destroy function. And similarly for this on start function, there is a on stop corresponding function. Whatever you are starting, that should be stopped in on stop function. And similarly for on resume, there is a on pause function. So I hope you clearly understood the use cases. So after these callbacks, there is one more interesting question in Android activity lifecycle. And that is what are the functions that are being called when we rotate our device. So just remember one thing, whenever we are rotating our device, so the whole configuration of our application will get changed. And that means and that means our activity will get completely destroyed and again recreated. So that means first when we are starting our activity, so on create will be called, then on start, then on resume. So our activity is in resume state now. And after this resume state, when we are rotating our device, then first the activity will be paused, then on stop, and then on destroy will be also called. And after that, the activity should be recreated. So on create will be again called for this new landscape configuration. And after on create to show something in the UI, the on start will be called and then on resume will be also called. So I hope you understood this scenario also. First the activity will be completely destroyed and then it will be recreated and then you have to also interact with the activity. So that's why on start and on resume will be also called. Because here you can also see after on resume only then the activity will be in running state. So this is all about our callback methods and now let's get back to the activity lifecycle state and events. So what are the states of an activity? States represent a particular state or situation for an activity. For me, I can say I am currently in the sitting state. And what are events? Events we can consider as a one-time operation. Like if I am uploading the video, so uploading is a state that the video is currently in uploading state. But when the video is uploaded, so uploaded is called as an event. The video is already uploaded. So what are the states? Let me just show you. So there is a lifecycle class that you can just access it lifecycle dot so there is this two enum classes that you can see here event and state so let me just get the states so there you can see one two three four five so there are currently five states that we can see and uh, if you can go to these there you can also read the descriptions here all these five states are present here and uh, let us discuss all one by one so the first state is this initialize state. So whenever you launch your application or your activity, so firstly that will be in initialize state even before calling the on create function. You can also read this thing. If you are writing here initialize, then you can hover over it and there you can see when it is constructed but has not received on create yet. So on create is the function that is the callback method. And uh, here we are in the on create function only. And after this initialize state on create function will be called and there is also a on create event. So let me also show you all the event enums. If you see here on create, there you can see there are total six enum I guess. So on create event is there. So there is a difference that you have to remember on create is a callback function also and a event also callback function is for the lifecycle owner. Here you can see my activity has this on create callback function because my activity is owning this lifecycle. So this is my lifecycle owner and it can have all these callback function which we already discussed. So activity will have all these callback function and we can have our custom implementation on them. And then what is this on create event? So if anything is observing my lifecycle of my activity then they will get this on create event. For example, you are creating a video player and uh, the video player is observing your activity. So whenever your activity is starting, that video player just starts playing the video. And whenever activity is stopping or it is destroying, so it will just stop the video or it will just clear some data and uh, save your battery. So how that video player will know when they have to stop, when they have to start. Whenever they will get this event that the on create for my lifecycle owner is called, Whenever the on create for my main activity is called that time they have to start or that time they have to stop. So these events are for those lifecycle observers. I hope you understood the example where these enums are being used. So after initialize this on create callback function will be called and then when this on create function will be completed then we are in the created state. So after this initialize state the on create function will get called and then we are in the created state and every observer will get the on create event. But after this when the on create function is completed that means we executed all these things that were present inside our on create function. 
So when this whole execution is completed, then we are no longer in the created state. We will call the on start and then we will be in the started state. And same every lifecycle observer will get the on start event. And after the execution of on start is completed, then we will call on resume and we will be in resume state. So all the observers will get the on resume event and here where we are having the focus in our activity and we are interacting with our activity. So this is the resume state where we are working with our activity. Whenever we are losing focus from our activity, suppose a dialogue is there or a bottom sheet is there, then we will be not in the resume state because we are calling the on pause and then we will be in the started state again. Just see activity do not have the focus. So it will be simply not in the resume state. But there is a thing to remember here, all the lifecycle observer will get the on pause event. Our activity is in the started state because it called the on pause callback function and uh, and after this callback function all the observer will get this on on pause event okay and uh, similarly after this when our activity is not present in the foreground you press the home button then then the activity will be no longer in the started state because on stop will get called and every observer will get the on stop event and uh, after this activity will be in created state and when you are not running the activity but it is still in the background so activity will remain in this created state so if you again open your activity then it will again call the on start and the similar cycle will go again but if you have not opened your activity then there is a unique scenario here the activity should be in a destroyed state so if you see here the state destroyed then you can see here this state is reached right before the activity is on destroy call. So the destroyed state will be before this on create, before this on destroy. Because that is also obvious, this on destroy is the last event that will occur to our activity and after this nothing will happen. So when you are removing the activity from recent apps, then the activity will be in destroyed state and after that the on destroy will get called and all the observer will get on destroy event. So this is an important thing to remember in this life cycle state and event thing. So make sure to revise this topic before end or interview and I hope you learned something new today. So make sure to subscribe and you can also access the end or interview questions playlist down in the description.